Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Television Dev, back again with another video for you. Today we're gonna to be looking at Vue.js data tables. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at two packages. One is Bootstrap View, and the other one is Vuetify. They offer a lot of different components, but one of the best components, in my opinion, is their data tables. It allows you to get data tables into your project very easily with minimal lines of code. So let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so here we are over at the computer, and what I've done is I've set up a project using the Vue CLI. I chose the default options, then I added Bootstrap View using NPM, and added Vuetify using the Vue CLI, and I will leave links in the description on how to get these into your project. It's very straightforward. Next, inside of app.view, I went ahead and deleted all the boilerplate out of here. I created two components, one called Bootstrap View Data Table, another one called Vuetify Data Table. I imported them into app.view, registered them as components, and then added them to the template. Now down below, we're gonna see we have some data here and it's posts, and I went ahead and took this from JSON placeholder. Now, if you'd like to follow along with me, I've left a link to the Bitbucket repo, and you can go ahead and download the starter project, and we can build out these tables together. So let's go ahead and get into it, and the first table we're going to look at is Bootstrap View. So if we go ahead and we go to the component, you'll see that we have an H2 in here right now, and that's what you're seeing on the screen, and it's the only thing in here. So let's go ahead and look at their documentation. And this is for their tables. So you'll see in order to add a table, the most basic usage is we add the B table, you can add some styling attributes, and then you add a property called items, and you point that at the items that you want to push into the table. So let's head back to our project. And what we're gonna do is inside of export default, I'm gonna say props, and we're gonna pass it in array, and we're just gonna say posts. And then we're gonna go back to app.view and we're going to pass in posts and set that equal to the post that we have below. So now we have posts flowing into our component. Next, we're going to add the B table right underneath our header. So we'll say B table and we're going to give it the striped and also hover. And we're just gonna say items and set that equal to posts. Go ahead and save that. And you'll see now we have our table. And it looks like I misspelled stripes, so we'll go ahead and add the R there and save it. And now we see we have our striped bootstrap view data table. So I'll make this a little bit bigger. And you'll see we have quite a nice looking table with just a couple lines of code. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so we can view our code. And the next thing we're gonna do is add search functionality to this. So in order to do that, we're gonna come down to our export default. I'm gonna make a data property. And we're going to put filter in here and set that to a blank string. Now up here above, we're gonna add a B row. And inside of that, we're gonna add a B call. We're going to give the B call MD of three, so it's only three columns. And inside of that, we're gonna put a B form input. We're going to give it a V model of filter. We'll give it a type of search and a placeholder of search. And I'm gonna close this so we can see this a little bit better. Now down here in the table, we're also gonna stick this in a B row inside of a B call. And we'll go ahead and put that in there. Alt Shift F to format everything. Let me put this on a new line. And then all we have to do is pass in a filter prop to our table and set it equal to the filter that we have set up. We'll go ahead and save everything and we see we have our search box. So if I go ahead and copy this and paste that in there, you'll see that we only get that option. If we go ahead and type something like two, we get the ID of two, three. And that's how you set up a search on your table. So as you can see, it is extremely, extremely easy to go ahead and set up search on your Bootstrap View data table. And next thing we're gonna look at is how to set up paging on your table. 
So we'll go down to our export default and in the data, we're going to add a few properties. We're going to say per page and set that equal to two. And this will determine how many results show up per page on our table. Then we're going to set up current page and set that equal to one. I'm going to go ahead and alt shift F to format all of this down here below our data prop. We're also going to set up a computed and we're going to say rows and we're going to return this dot posts dot length. Then up here on our table, we're going to set up per page and set that to our per page variable that we set up below. We're going to say current page and set that to the current page variable we set up below. I'll shift F to format this. And then below our table, we're going to go ahead and say B pagination. And inside of this, we're going to pass it a V model equal to the current page. Total rows equal to the rows computed property that we set up and per page equal to the per page variable that we went ahead and set up below. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And you'll see now we have pagination below our table and it looks like I misspelled rows. So now we have our pagination, we have the correct number of pages, and you'll see if I click these, it goes ahead and pages through our table. So once again, the Bootstrap View team has made it extremely easy to add pagination to our tables as well as search. And the last thing we're going to look at is how you can add custom columns to our tables. Now, what we're specifically going to do is add a nice little delete button on each row so that we can go ahead and delete records out of our table. In order to do that, we're going to come down to our export default and inside of our data property, we're going to add a new prop called fields and we're going to set that equal to an array inside of there. We're going to map to all of our existing fields. So we're going to say user ID ID title. And then we're going to add a custom column called actions down below our computed property we're going to add a new methods property and inside of here we're going to say delete item and we're going to pass in an id and we'll say const index equals this dot post dot index of And we're going to say X dot ID is equal to the ID that we've passed in. And then we'll say this dot posts dot splice. And we'll splice the index and we will take one record out of it. Up inside of our template, we're going to find our B table. And inside of there, we're going to add a new tag and we'll say template. We're going to bind to the V slot cell pass in actions and set that equal to data inside of our template. We're going to add a B button. We're going to give it a variance of danger and we're going to bind to the click events and say deletes item and we're going to pass in data dot item dot ID. And then we're going to give our B button some text of delete. Then on our table, we need to pass in our fields. So we're going to say fields and give it the fields that we just passed in. And you'll see now we have our delete button. So we can make the table a little bit bigger. And we go ahead and we click on our delete button. You'll see that it is deleting our post, but this is only client side. So if we refresh, we get our post back. And in less than 10 minutes, we've created a data table to display our records, search through them. It has paging functionality and the ability to add custom columns with actions where we decided to use a delete method. So as you can see, it's extremely easy to implement things using bootstrap view data tables. But if we go ahead and look at their documentation and go to the complete example, you'll see that there is a ton more that you can do with this, such as sorting. You can set the initial sort. We implemented a filter. You could 
filter on specific columns and we've added our paging in there and you'll see that there's even more things you can do with row highlighting and just a ton more stuff you can do. So it's extremely easy way to get tables into your project and I would highly recommend that you check it out. And now that we looked at Bootstrap view data tables, let's go ahead and switch gears and look at another very popular view plugin called Viewtify. Let's head over to their documentation and look at data tables and we see we have a very basic example here, but it looks really good. So we're going to go ahead and look at the code. We see that we pass in something called headers, items, which will be our posts, items per page because paging is built in directly to the Viewtify table and you don't have to add it. And then they've added a class of elevation one to give it kind of a card look to it. If we look at the script, we'll see our headers in here and you can specify different properties for your headers. And we're just going to do text and value. We see we ha they have their desserts, which is going to be our posts. So we'll go ahead and we're going to head back to our project and go to the Viewtify data table inside of the export defaults to pull our posts in. We're going to do a props property with an array and set that to posts. Then we'll head back to our app.view and we'll just go ahead and copy this because we're going to pass it in the exact same way to our Vitify data table. We'll head back to the Vitify data table component and inside of here, and this is very important, all, everything that is inside of a Vitify app has to be in this V app. Um, the V main doesn't really matter, but it, I know it has to be inside of the V app. And I would not recommend that you put Bootstrap and Vitify in the same project. This is for demonstration purposes. For the most part, this would be inside of your app component and everything would go inside of your V app. So in the next port defaults, we're going to make a data property. And inside of this data property, we'll specify our headers. And we're gonna set that to an array, and this is going to be an array of objects. In here, we will say text, user ID, and the value will be user ID, which maps to our user ID property inside of our posts array. Then we'll say text. Oh, we gotta make another object, and I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this one. And this is for our ID. So all we have to do is delete the user off of here. And the same thing for this, which actually is lowercase. And we will paste it in one more time and we will replace this with title. And we will also replace this with title. Inside of our template underneath the Vitify data table header, we're going to just add a V data table. We will specify the headers as the headers that we set down in the export default. And then we will add the items as our posts. We will set also say items per page, which will determine paging. And we're just gonna say two. And then we'll also give it that class of elevation. I can spell dash one. So we'll go ahead and save everything. And I'm also going to hit all shift F. And if we come back over here, we'll see that we have our Vitify data table and it looks very nice and professional for only having a few lines of code. Now, as I said before, we won't have to implement paging because it comes in by default in the Vitify data table component. But what we're going to do is we're going to add search to it. So we're going to head back over to our export export default and in here we're just going to put a new property and call it search and set it to a blank string up here in our template underneath this viewify data table header we're going to add a v row and inside of the v row we'll add a v call and we're going to give it md equal to three so it's only three columns inside of this column we will say v text field we will give it a V model equal to our search that we specified down in the export default. We'll give it an append icon equal to MDI dash magnify. We will give it a label equal to search. We're gonna say single line and we will also hide the details. I'm gonna hit Alt Shift F to format this so it looks a little bit better. 
Then down here, we're gonna do another V row. We'll do a V call inside of that. And then we're gonna take our data table and go ahead and put it in there. And then on our data table, we will pass a prop into it called search and we'll set it to our search that we specified. I'll go ahead and save everything. We will come back. We see we now have a text box up here. And let's just say that I copied this and we search for it. We can see that anything without appearing in it is now filtered into our table. And if I just type two, we see we get one result back. One, we get a couple results back. But as you can see, search is working and that was extremely easy to implement. And the last thing we're gonna look at is how we can add a delete button inside of each row that so we can go ahead and delete them out of our data table. Now, in order to do that, we'll just head back to our bootstrap view data table. We're just gonna copy this methods tag out of here because it's going to be exactly the same. We'll head back to our viewify data table and right below our data property, we will give it our methods. Then in our header, we will specify that we have a new column. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this out of here. We're going to paste this in, let me get rid of this white space. We'll add the text as actions. We'll add the value as actions. And then we're going to specify sortable equal to false. And the reason we did that is because we don't want this column to be sortable and I'll show you exactly what I mean once we finish out this functionality. Next up in the template, we're going to find our V data table and inside of here, and inside of here, we'll specify a template tag. Then we're going to bind to the V slot. And we'll say item dot actions equals item. Now, for some reason, the linter does not like this, but it's completely fine. So we'll go ahead and just move on and we will say V icon. We're gonna give it the small attributes and on click, we're going to call our delete item and we're gonna pass it the item dot ID. Inside of our icon tag, we're gonna specify that we want the MDI dash delete icon and we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And then if we head back to our data table and we start deleting these out, you'll see that we've added the delete functionality under our actions. Now, if I refresh this, since this is only on the client, we'll still get everything back. And as you can see, some of these fields are sortable. I'm gonna make this bigger. Some of these fields are sortable and you'll see that when we click on them, it does sort them. And we don't want this to be sortable because what's the point of sorting our little delete icon here? So it's gonna go ahead and wrap it up. As you can see, Bootstrap View and Viewify give you a plug and play solution when it comes to data tables. And even though we've covered some of the most common use cases, there is a ton more that you can do with this. And I would highly encourage you to go check out their documentation. Now, if you got any value out of this, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about this video, please drop me a line in the comment section below. And until next time, happy coding.